got a new set of Royal Mint coins. It's been a while since I ordered them, about three or four months, in fact. Are they any good? Let's find out. I'm almost, almost a bit scared to open the box. They look good. So I filmed a little intro for this video, and it uh, was with the mindset that the coins were good. The quite honest, brutal fact is they're not. There are issues on both. So Royal Mint Quality Control, QC number two, letting the side down once again. Hello everybody, Backyard Bullion here and welcome to this week's edition of In Focus Friday, the show where we take a good close look at cool things made of silver and gold. We've got a Royal Mint box here which we're going to unbox. Hopefully it's going to be a good one. I think this is the Two Coin Britannia for 2022, the reverse frosted set. I've been waiting an awful long time for it and it is a bit frustrating I have to say as a customer. So not only are we going to go through this coin, uh, unbox it and see what it's like, hopefully the condition is good, the quality is good because I've had quite the run of bad coins. But I also want to talk about the whole customer experience there of having to wait for a very long time to get the coins. It's been a very long time. In fact, I should have on the invoice here. It is, in fact, the two coin proof set, uh, which I purchased on uh, purchase date. Oh, it doesn't say. OK, well, there we go. Uh, so let's see. I mean, I think it was basically March. So it's been a while. It's been at least three months. Uh, hopefully the quality is up to scratch. Pardon the pun. We don't want any scratches. There's the little box with the label 4th of the 7th. So manufactured this week, put together this week. I guess, I'm guessing that's what those dates are for, by the way. A lot of people have assumed that, but that's what we're assuming. I think that's probably a fairly good representation of what's happening right now. So here we have the whole presentation in its traditional kind of raw mint cardboard out, outer box. And then inside we have got the nice cardboard sleeve, the Britannia two coin silver proof set, as we can see there, very nice. I do like these uh, these sets, these boxes I've got now. I think this is the fourth year of them. I think I've got the reverse frosted ones. I think it's really good. And if you're going to get any of these coins, I think in the sort of Britannia series, proof Britannias, I like to think that the frost, reverse frosted one is one of the better ones to get. Um, so that's first up a good sign straight away. We've got two coins in capsules, relatively centered in their housing. I mean, it's quite firmly in there. It's not really something that could move. My little critique, my little criticism still stands. Is it that difficult to do that and then end up with a really nice presentation? But, you know, the, there was one box like this that I got. Uh, I think it was the Tudor Beasts re reverse frosted proof where the ribbon had all broken. It was all nasty looking. Um, so that's good to have that come out there. So we get in here a COA, Certificate of Authenticity, and a little information booklet all about a Britannia 2000 and 22. Uh, I won't have a read of all of this on camera, but if you are so inclined to have a good old read, then please feel free to pause the video and have a look. But I'll have a look at it later. I always think it's nice to have these kind of things included as well, just to really get to grips with what it is you've bought, because at the end of the day, you're buying something that's not just uh, the silver weight that you're buying. You're buying a collectible, sort of modern collectible, basically. How well that collectible will do as an investment is, of course, as anybody's guess, but that's quite nice to see. Um, so there are the coins. Let's have a quick look at the COA. Get all of the paperwork out of the way before we have a good close look at the coins themselves. So I've got number 354 here, and you can see that the reverse frosted proof here has a mintage of 1110, uh, with this whole presentation having a, an Im a limited edition presentation of 600. So it's, as you can see, quite a different to the standard Britannia of 6010, and I think that's why they are the key dates here. So, the coins themselves, let's hope that they are good. Because we've been waiting long enough for them, let me tell you. Uh, it really has been a long old slog to get these coins in, so it is finally nice to have them. Now, one thing that I will say is I, I'm not going to really over-speculate on why the delays are happening. Uh, we have, of course, a huge amount of issues in the world with supply chains. I don't think it's because there's a shortage of silver. I think there's a lot of people who've overhyped that kind of mantra that the Royal Mint can't produce the silver coins because there's no silver. I think it's actually a logistics thing relating to the dyes, to the manufacturing of the blanks as well. So the fact that there is 
you know, a delay on these is not an indication that there is a shortage of the metal. It's more about everything else. So I'm really liking these coins. I knew I liked the design when I saw it. A few people were a little bit put off by the contemporary nature of part of the design, but um, I quite like it. I think they've had some real stunners in the past, and this is harking back to one of those. Uh, they've had some real absolute dogs of coins as well come out. Uh, I always hate that one with the uh, the United Kingdom shape with the, it looks like the sun rays coming out of Britannia's bum, but this is looking good. And we're gonna have now a quick close look at all the detail that we can. Let's start with the key coin here, the reverse frosted proof. And you can see straight away from those side-by-side -side comparisons that they're very different, but I think the reverse frosted proof uh, really accentuates all of the design elements of this coin, and I think it looks stunning. I, I've said so many times before that a, f a flat matte finished coin is beautiful. It's a thing to wonder and a thing to marvel at, and it's really good to see the raw mint doing them and doing them well. Now, how well have they done it? That's the question. Have we got a good coin? And I have to say it's looking quite good right now. Um, there's a little few specks up here on the top of the coin. Maybe that's just part of the capsule. Oh, what I will say is the capsule is a, in fact, I think it was on the capsule, yeah, you can see it moving around over here, so that's good news. Uh, it's a screw capsule, which is actually really good to see because those other ones that they've been using are just awful. Uh, not seeing any major issues on this coin, which is great, good stuff. I'm gonna, of course, have a good close look under a loop, but here we have the queen's side. This, I think, looks beautiful with the frosting here and the queen all shiny and beautiful. Very nice looking. A lot of people have talked about the marks on the neck there being um, an imperfection or some other, I don't know, design issue with the dies, but it's part of the design. It's on all the coins, it's there. You know, good old Queenie is no stranger to the old wrinkle. She is of course 95 now, so it is what it is. But there we have the reverse rostered proof, both sides looking really good. Now we can have a quick look at the regular version, which in its own right is very pretty as well. I mean, in certain ways, this has its own beauty with the frosting on the actual Britannia part of the coin with the outside bit. Of all of the different Britannias and reverse frosted proof pairs that I've seen and owned, I have to say this is one of the ones that really impresses me the most, that the regular Britannia actually looks pretty damn good as well. So lots of really positive things to say about this coin and this coin set, with the exception of the long wait that we've had to have to get it in. It has been a bit of a while, and as with most things at the Royal Mint, there are certain things that I would improve that if I ruled the world, I would change, like the uh, wait times, uh, the planning, the logistics of this kind of thing. If you know that you're gonna have issues with supply chains, then let your customers know. Just keep that communication open, whether it's through public social media or through direct communications with those orders or those customers that have placed orders. It's really important to do, because I know a lot of people were just sat there wondering, and there are still a lot of other people sitting there wondering why they haven't had things like Kilo Queens, uh, Kilo Gothic Crowns, I think it is, and, and from January, January coins people are not having yet, and that's just mad, it really is. Hey everyone, Future Backyard Bullion here. So uh, I finished that video talking about how wonderful it was to get some good quality coins from the Royal Mint for a change. And I know a lot of you have probably been staring at this for the last five minutes or so, thinking, hang on, there's a great big ding right in the middle of it, and there is, and I missed it through the viewfinder of my camera whilst filming, but of course, as soon as I checked it, after turning off the camera, it's pretty obvious, it's fairly obvious. In fact, it's very obvious. The fact that I missed it was amazing. I also missed something else because I didn't turn this coin over. <laughs> you can see this. I mean, I was so excited that I got some good coins from the Royal Mint and I don't, <laughs> I just don't. I, they're garbage, they're awful. Why has this slipped through quality control? Uh, I have no idea how these two issues have got through quality control, and this mark down here is most certainly on the coin itself, not the capsule. I mean, it's it's definitely a fingerprint or a smear or something that's happened there. Uh, and there's a ding up here. Now on this one, I could have probably lived with, if all the issues were on just the regular Britannia, I might have even considered just keeping this because this is the key coin for me. But, mm, ding right there is gonna get in my head and I'm not gonna be able to miss it, and that's just, absolutely unacceptable, unacceptable. And um, it is a real disappointment. Not only uh, have the Raw Mint messed up the uh, coins, but they can't seem to print an invoice either. So without 
showing all my personal details on here. Uh, they've basically got, as you can see, two bits of paper to have one bit of an invoice. Look at that. I mean, great, isn't it? it it's you pay for the quality from the Royal Mint. You really do. And the fact that somebody thought it was acceptable, you know, when the print had a malfunction, just to put them in like that is, I think, a bit silly. A bit. It shows, I think, that there is no quality control. Or if there is, then it's absolute not fit for purpose garbage, quite frankly. Um, so I'm trying to get the little sticker out here so we can see what number the sticker number is. Let's see if I can get it out. Well, I can see it. It's QC2, it says. Um, there we go. Here we are. Kind of folded it in half a little bit, but you can see there you go, QC2 on there. There we go, QC number two. So whoever who's QC control number two, um, sorry mate or lady, you have not done a very good job. Really haven't. So uh, from my perspective as a customer of the Royal Mint, um, that's, it's just another one of these situations where it's just not acceptable and it's really frustrating because I love this coin. I think it's a great design. And as you can see from the start of the video where I was really excited about it and I got that first look at it and I was super excited about the design, how good it looked. I was complimenting the Royal Mint. I don't know quite at what point I'm going to put the edit of this part in, but at some point you can definitely, I think, tell the tone of my voice has changed. It's, um, yeah, it's really annoying. So I'm in the process of writing a strongly worded email to... Um, the team at the Royal Mint that I've spoken to a number of times about quality control and also their CEO and Jessup, uh, whose email is publicly available. I would ask anybody that is upset by seeing quality issues on their coins or on my coins to raise it to their attention because without them knowing that they're doing a bad job, they can't improve. And they know they're doing a bad job because we've told them about it so many times before. It's really frustrating and it's really annoying as a customer to wait three months for this coin and it to be in such bad condition. It's just disappointing and it's like one of those things you never want your parents to say, we're not angry, we're just disappointed. I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed and I will be sending these back and I will be expecting a uh, restrike at the very least if they don't have any in stock. I will be standing my ground again, I will get what I've paid for and uh, we'll hopefully hit them in the wallet where it hurts, you know, if they have to go back and produce another run of coins to make the mintage of good coins, then that's going to hurt them. That's going to how it's going to be how we make sure they get it right going forwards. So, yeah, I mean, it, it is what it is. We can't really change it. I, I, want, I don't want to end this video on a complete negativity spiral because it's never good to be negative in life. We've got to remember that we're lucky enough in this world to be able to buy silver in the first place and to have these coins. So perspective is important. And let's finish by the reminder of the milestone that we hit this week on our channel, 40,000 subs. So we're giving this away. All of the information about this giveaway will be published on Sunday. Uh, if you're not subscribed to our channel and you want a chance to win 400 grams of beautiful poured silver that I have worked very hard on, much to my neighbor's displeasure, I'm sure, hammering into this beautiful, beautiful finish, then hit subscribe and hit the alarm bell for notifications as well. Otherwise, uh, I'm really sorry again to all of my uh, hardcore viewers who were probably screaming at the screen for five minutes or so of me saying how good this coin was when you could glaringly obviously see this big ding. Thank you. I know I would. you would have definitely helped me if I hadn't have seen it in the edit. I, uh, to be quite frank, don't know how I would have missed it in the edit. Uh, and I'm also sorry for not turning this coin over. I was just, I was over, overindulged by the beauty of the coin, which it is a beautiful design at the end of the day. So yeah, it is what it is. You live and learn. We'll hopefully do better on our next little unboxing. But for now, thank you one and all for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, not the coin, because I'm certainly not thumbs upping this coin, then hit the thumbs up. Otherwise, subscribe, comment. We'll see you on the next one. As always, please make sure that you like, share, comment, and subscribe for more.